I'm Chris here with Bux Shop, and today we're going to take a look at the Line 6 Helix. Now, Helix is a new kind of guitar processor. It is uh, basically the combination of work that has uh, taken about uh, four years to develop, and it incorporates a, a brand new modeling engine. It also has a very intuitive user interface, and it is probably the most comprehensive controller that you can use for your guitar rig, incorporating analog and uh, digital gear. Now, the Helix in itself um, is kind of uh, described as real smart control. And if you keep with these three headings, then we have the real, where we talk about the amp modeling and the effects modeling, the microphones and, and all the modeling that is created to sound as real and feel as real and authentic as a real thing, as it was in the studio. Um, you're sitting in the control room and your amp is mic'd up in the live room and what you're hearing back through the studio monitors is basically um, uh, exactly that. And um, so we have a complete new way of modeling, we call it the, uh, the HX modeling. And um, that goes down to modeling the components of the individual amps and effects and speakers and uh, microphones. Um, so far that for uh, an amplifier, for example, they'd be looking at up to 15 individual components in an, in an amplifier and um, modulate uh, or model these behaviors like the uh, transistors and the uh, capacitors that are in there. So um, each part in the signal chain is basically being modeled or profiled and then put into the amp model, for example. And um, that promises to be a, a very real and authentic replication of um, what the real thing is, the real amp or the real effect. As a, as a little example, um, the effect, the Univibe, for example, uses a little light bulb um, to control the, the sound in it. And uh, actually in the, the model of the Univibe is a model of a light bulb. And this is kind of the component level modeling that's in the Helix that uh, gives it a really authentic and, um, and real and, uh, and, you know, awesome feel, really. Especially if you're kind of a guitar player who's a little bit more tactile, you, you feel the responsiveness of the amp. And the same goes for the speaker cabinets. Uh, completely new speaker cabinets have been um, remodeled and captured together with about 16 microphones that are also modeled, and not just the microphone itself, but also the proximity to it. So you can basically move the microphone back and forth and control the bass response that the microphone is giving, just like the real thing, like you would do in the studio, um, which is really great. So that's kind of the real aspect of it. And then we have the smart aspect, because um, with a lot of you know, power comes not only a lot of responsibility, um, but also a steep learning curve. And um, in, in general, uh, we wanted to look at things um, to have it a, a more intuitive way of working with it, because uh, it's all great having all the tools there. If it's uh, difficult to set up and create, uh, you know, it takes kind of um, the flow out of the creative process and the music making process. So we've been um, to a, uh, an extent where we kind of looked at how can we make this so intuitive that if you spend about five minutes with Helix and read a little cheat sheet that's in the box, you are ready to go. And uh, what happened is that we put a huge LCD display on it and um, that basically shows you everything, the whole signal flow. And then you have uh, touch sensitive foot switches that allow you just by the way you interact with them, you, you either touch them to edit them, you press them down to engage them or you hold them to assign them. And that makes um, creating sounds very, very intuitive and very, very fast. Um, it's like um, sound creation at the speed of thought, so to speak. 
And uh, the control aspect of this, you know, real smart control is uh, about the integration of Helix into other products or into other gear. So if you have a bunch load of uh, oddball effect units that you rely on for your sound, then you can incorporate this into Helix using um, the effects loops that are in here, for example. And make it part of a preset, for example, and combine it so everything is combined within Helix. And um, that makes it a very flexible and, and very um, professional way of dealing with uh, internal and external effects. In addition to that, we have inputs for uh, control pedals, uh, expression pedals, CV control, amp switching, and you probably have one of the most advanced MIDI controllers that you find in a guitar multi-effects unit where you can send up to uh, six uh, MIDI messages at the same time. So you could start a sequence or, or at the same time as you start recording and um, change the level on a mixing desk, for example. And that makes it uh, probably the most advanced um, control unit that is out there. So that's kind of a, an overview of Helix. And you know, why don't we have a little look up close and, and listen to a couple of sounds and see what it's like working with Helix. Okay, so why don't we now take a, a look and a listen to some of the sounds in Helix. Uh, let's start with this preset here called Hey Joe, which is an homage on Mr. Mr. Hendrix, I guess. So you have kind of a, uh, a plexi marshall kind of sound. <laughs> What is kind of nice is that you know when you work with the volume control on the guitar you kind of really get the interaction so if I dial it down a little I have a nice clean sound for uh, the old and then I dig in a little bit more and I can keep more compression and a little bit more sag out of it and then turn it up a little more. And then we maybe add an effect like the uni vibe. Or the um, Octavia effect that he, he liked. <laughs> And these effects are just um, basically models of the original ones. And um, even if I dial it down, again, it reacts like the real thing. So if I have this Octavia. Um, which is very nice. And um, so I can uh, get access to uh, 45 new amps in here. I have uh, about 70 effects that are all new. And the, the modeling that's done is called the HX modeling, um, which, as I said before, is kind of component level modeling. Um, but it also gives you uh, a total of four stereo signal paths, which means you're not only running one chain in stereo, you can run up to four chains and assign them to all to the same guitar, or you plug in auxiliary, um, like a bass guitar or a microphone, and you can have a signal chain for each of these, which is great. And uh, it becomes a really sophisticated way of managing like a, a wet dry rig, for example. So that's great. Uh, maybe for go for some other sounds real quick, um, maybe something more in the uh, uh, kind of medley kind of thing. <laughs> And uh, I think what, what kind of is, is nice with it, again, um, if, if you dial down. Now, a 
cool little thing that I've done here in this, uh, in this preset, if you look at the display, um, I'm actually running this amp through two different speaker cabinets um, that are mic'd with different microphones. So I'm, I'm having a, um, a 4x12 mic with a um, SM57 and one with a one Roya 1 to 1 microphone. And this is something that's become kind of a studio standard within the last decade or so. Uh, and you can kind of blend these two signals to get uh, one um, you know, overall sound. And um, the other thing that um, is quite interesting, everything in Helix is assignable. So this amp model here, this um, Angle Meteor, um, has a, um, a mid-boost. That's what the amp comes with, right? And uh, I can actually program this mid-boost to be switched on and off. So I can have my rhythm sound and then um, I can switch the boost on and have, um, and have the boost come on. And at the same time, I've also programmed a delay on here. So uh, this is basically my, my solo tone. I have a boost in mid-range and I have a delay so I can go from, um, from rhythm playing to lead playing. Um, let's see what that sounds like. <laughs> So that's kind of a little uh, kind of look into the, uh, uh, I guess, the, the more heavy kind of uh, section. As I said, there's uh, 45 amp models from kind of tiny little tweed amps to high gain amps. So there's something for everyone. Um, so listen to some of the, um, the more cleaner stuff, like here's the, uh, uh, the deluxe. with a little bit of reverb, I put the compressor in and then you're kind of in funk, uh, funk land. Um, or you just put a little bit of chorus on and then uh, you're kind of in, uh, you know, police land. Another interesting thing is uh, to put maybe the um, tremolo on and um, have a bit more of a kind of a 60s sound. I'll turn it off and just put your little, you know, clon on and, and you're kind of in blue central. Okay, so um, I think what would be cool now is to maybe start with a clean patch and see how easy it is to basically create a, um, um, a new preset. And um, let's go to this one here. It's an empty preset. And now we're going to run through the workflow and see how easy it is to program. So um, as you can see here, at the, here's my signal chain. The guitar goes in here and it goes out there. And uh, I use the joystick here on the right hand side to move between positions. And um, let's start, for example, with an amp. Um, I just press down the joystick and it gets me the list of available models. And um, I can choose the amp and cap model, which is a complete model, um, then just the amp. And I can, if I want to assign a separate cabinet to it, I can do that. And uh, if, for example, I play with a, um, um, a, an amp and just want to use the preamp, I can do that as well. Uh, but for this one, I'm just going to stand, uh, stay with the amp and cap model. Just press on it so I can choose between guitar and bass amps. Obviously, I'm choosing guitar amp since uh, I have a guitar around my neck. And um, let's go for, um, you know, the, the classic kind of 
jump plexi. So, and what I have here now is a model of a, um, a jump plexi on here at the bottom and above those encoders, you see uh, the parameters that I can influence. I've got my, my drive, base, middle, and so forth. If I use the page button here on the right, I can go to the next page where I have influence on even more parameters like the, uh, the sag and the ripple and the bias control and all of that. So I can really customize and hone in those. Uh, again, coming back to the component level modeling, all of this is possible to influence uh, on this um, uh, on this page, for example, if I want uh, my amp to feel a little stiffer, I could take, you know, the sag out, so which is kind of, a, you know, the way the the power tubes compress in a way. If I wanted to feel a little bit more gooey, I can put more in, um, or I can go back to the default just by clicking onto this uh, encoder. And then on the next page, I have um, the cabinet, and again, I have lots of um, different microphone options here. As you can see, 16 in total. Um, also the distance, and here again the proximity effect will be accurately tracked. And uh, I can even put the um, low cut in here. I know, for example, that the SM57 um, cuts off at like 15 kilohertz. And uh, so I can dial this in, a little bit of early reflection depending on how far it is. So I have a lot of, um, a lot of control. Let's listen what it sounds like. <laughs> Cool. Um, would be nice to have a little bit of you know, room or something in there. So again, I use this um, navigation wheel and go to maybe um, some reverb, a stereo reverb. I can choose um, a simple plate, for example, and um, make the room a little smaller, the mix a little less maybe. Let's see? Yeah, that's nice. Um, what would be cool as well, have a little bit of delay, um, but my delay, let's take the simple delay for the sake of it. But just like in the studio, I can, um, let's listen to it. So I have kind of the stereo delay going on. But just like in the studio, I could run this like an aux. So I'm just taking this effect and moving it down into the second row. And this is basically my second effect path. Right, so I've got the amp going through the reverb, and then uh, parallel to that, I have the, um, the the delay. So it gives me a lot of control over what I want in the signal path. So if I wanted an effect delay, I want to put a modulation or a chorus or something like this on there. Um, I could have my delay with a chorus on there, for example. Now, if I don't like anything, it's really easy. You can go um, and clear that block, and that's out of the signal chain. But this is basically how easy it is to create your custom um, custom sounds. Um, just for one, for good measure, before the amp, let's put maybe a, um, a distortion box or something. Obviously, we want this to be in mono, and maybe um, maybe a tube screamer, and then that gives me. Um, that gives me a nice signal chain. Now, maybe a bit too much gain. Um, now, the easy way to assign these is that I can take this block here that is highlighted, for example, the Tube Screamer, and I just touch any of the buttons here at the lower row, for example. I touch this, um, this button, and then it asks me, do you want to assign this, foot, uh, this effect to this foot switch? I say, OK, and boom my Tube Screamer appears here, so I can turn it on and off right here. Uh, let's do the same thing for the, um, for the delay, for example. I just want to put it here. OK. And uh, same thing for the reverb. And um, this is how easy it basically is to um, assign everything. Now, let's say, for example, my Tube Screamer or my delay probably more obvious. I need to adjust that that's you know, too fast or too slow or whatever. I just touch it, and then at this row, all the parameters for this effect will show up. So um, I can go, actually, I want a time delay. So I click in here and get me a dotted delay. So that's now hooked up to the, um, to the tap tempo. <laughs> And 
And this is how easy it is to assign any of the parameters in here, um, which is great because again, it's kind of the you know um, sound creation at the speed of thought, so to say. And um, that is you know basic operation. As I said, if you spend like five minutes with a cheat sheet that comes in the box and um, you know go through that, it's really easy. You know, if you want to save this, you're just going to save this as new preset and um, just so I remember it, it's going to be one. So this is now new preset one. And all of these things can be custom named. So if you want to call this Scream 808 something completely different, you could go and change the name so and it shows up uh, accordingly. Now obviously if I change the preset to something completely different, um, like this one, then the names change according to the effects that are in my chain, which is pretty cool. Another thing that is really easy and, and makes a difference is this, uh, this pedal edit mode, um, which means you hold down this button and then all the effects and amps and everything in your signal chain is being displayed here. And you have the, um, uh, the, the opportunity to control and, and change everything um, using your feet. So let's say uh, I wanted to change the, um, the uh, minotaur sound. So all the the um, parameters are being displayed. If I wanted to change the gain, I can do that and uh, just use the expression pedal. Just select it and, you know, until you're happy. Or if you, you know, heavy footed, you can use, use this and make really fine adjustments, you know, same with the level. So it's really easy. You don't even have to take your hands off to edit anything. You know, if you're at a live gig and you think, you know, it's too much reverb, you know, you don't have to bend down, you just use your feet. It's really easy and really comfortable to do. And um, that is, you know, how easy kind of the workflow is with Helix. Now, one other thing that you can do or a bunch of other things that you can do is um, incorporate any of um, the analog outboard gear that you may have, like a stomp box. We have four effects loops here that are all freely assignable. So let's say you have a, a distortion box and an echo unit that you love and that you use to create your tones. What you can do is basically set these in your um, send and return path and you can have an effects loop for example or send and return and integrate all of this. This has now been shown up in your signal path. You can assign it to any of the foot switches. I have even more uh, left here. Maybe I want to assign it to here. Set OK and this is my effects loop and let's, uh, let's assume there's an echo unit that I've connected to it that I can now switch on and off. And uh, that makes it really easy to incorporate anything into your rig. And um, yeah, I guess so, so there you have it. Um, in terms of connection, we can connect the guitar, uh, bass. Obviously, we have a microphone input, which has the same great preamp that is in the M20D Stagescape mixer from Line 6. Um, the actual dynamic range of the guitar input is 123 decibel, which is kind of the best in class. Um, we have the effects loops, um, XLR and quarter inch out, uh, headphones out. We've got connections for um, Variax guitars and also an AES EBU and digital um, SPDIF output and uh, a USB because you can use Helix also as a 8 in 8 out USB interface and um, make the uh, use this as the um, as the brains for your uh, recording setup. And then obviously you have the MIDI um, connections. So if you wanted to send any MIDI messages while you're switching something in and off, you can do this as well, like you know, changing amp channels or you know, changing presets in your rec effects or whatnot. So it, it makes um, for a complete kind of control system for your guitar really. And um, yeah, I guess, so that's Helix. Um, a kind of new breed of guitar processors from Line 6. And um, it's, you know, as I said, it's real, it's smart, and um, it gives you all the control that you want. So if you want more information about Helix and Line 6, uh, please click on the links above or below. And as always, like and subscribe. And um, thank you for watching this review on Bugshop. Thank you. Bye.